welcome back. And we are moving into our second conversation for today as we focus on the environment. Uh, yesterday was World Environment Day and, today, and this Friday is going to be World Oceans Day. So we're taking the opportunity to speak with two young people and a representative of Ecology Project International. He's the Belize Program Coordinator, that's Corey Constantino on the end. And then we have two students. We have Alonza Stain and Risa Stevens, both third form students and members of the Environmental Club at Gwen Lizarraga High School. Good morning <laughs> and welcome. Good morning, guys. I must say, firstly, it's so nice to have you guys in. Uh, good spirits, good spirits. Now, yeah. Ecology Project International, Corey, uh, you know, it's definitely something that a lot of folks try to look forward and look forward to. And when it comes to environment, we know that the impacts that it, it has on our daily lives. Talk to us about it. Um, yeah. The it's important for everybody to know that they have a responsibility to take care of the environment. It's not just for us as environmentalists or us as science students who come into the field of science and try to work to make it a better uh, place every day. Um, everybody has a part to play and so we at Ecology Project International, our mission um, is as an environmental education organization, we try to reach out to our community to um, like fishing communities, agricultural communities, student groups, vulnerable mm -hmm. people and communities that have direct and indirect impacts um, to the environment through their communities or through their everyday actions. Yeah. Okay. So for example, we just um, reaching out to these students at Gwen Lizarraga is one program underneath our organization yeah. um, that we uh, employ to try to create a positive impact to the environment. Because um, yeah. it's these students that will come up later on and have influences yeah. in governmental or NGO seats to, to be able to drive that influence, right? And working alongside you at, at your organization. But talk to us about yeah. what the International uh, Ecology Project uh, has set out as its mandate and how Belize fits into that. Right, well, we're, we're a new and upcoming organization. Mm -hmm. We use a non-conventional approach to education whereby instead of having students and community members inside a classroom or inside a formal setting, uh, we take it to the remote areas of Belize and we have our sessions there like first-hand experiences. Wow. Um, so these students had the opportunity to learn about our marine resources and our marine assets at um, the actual Turnif Atoll. So wow. things that they're seeing in their textbooks or on pictures on Google, they were actually seeing first-hand swimming in it, hiking in it, and literally taking in um, everything that they were seeing. Yeah. You know, now that Corey said that, everybody's going to want to join the environment. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but talk to us about why you were interested in joining your own environmental clubs at school. Well, um, on TV, like, like you're always like, like people, people doing things for the environment that, that you, you always want to try or... or yeah or um, get like take part in and mm -hmm. and being in this very environmental club like you get to do everything like we want though and mm. yeah, good. so you wanted to participate in the things you were seeing yeah yeah and for nice. you well for me um that's something i like you know yeah. i want to know more about um other aquatic creatures and yeah. stuff yeah so what was it like being at, being at the atoll? I mean, I've never been to the atoll, and I could raise my hand and say it, right? But what was that like for you, uh, uh, Elon? Well, the experience was great, mm -hmm. you know. I had fears, but I had to overcome them. Let's talk about those fears, partner. Well, sharks, I saw a shark, really? and a shark, and, you know, I was scared, but, you know, I overcome. Well, swimming in deep water wasn't a thing for me, until my classroom, like, you know, my class, like, we, we went together and we did it together, so yeah. Yeah. it was great. Did you touch the shark? Hmm? Did you touch the shark? No, mom. <laughs> I don't know where from the shark. Maybe steps. The next trip you can, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> and for you? for you? Well, my first time as yeah. a key and, and in such deep water, I'm like, yeah. so excited and, like, most of the time, like, like for the first time on the boat, I'm mm -hmm. so afraid. But when, when, like, when we pass the corals and and then I get distracted by the look and thing, like, I'm never afraid again. And then 
when time like when we go up on the boat again, I I am always the first time because I mean so I like it. In we go and <laughs> in the water so deep, I always the first one for jumping because <laughs> yeah. I love swimming. Oh so it was your first time out to the Keys. Yes, wow, that's so a great experience. Great. What, what attracts you more? Is it more looking at the marine ecosystem, or do you also have an interest in inland areas, in your uh, forests and the biodiversity that that, that exists there? Um, well, everything like everything like the ev the marine, everything like um, the fishes and um, learn about the the, um, the habitats and things like that. Mm. I mean, good and hiking and things like that. I never done it before, but yeah. I'm interested. You know, yeah. I, I feel so happy. And for, for you? Yeah. Well, it was like the same thing, you know. I was interested in knowing new things and yeah. the marine creatures, they, they like put a big stand up, you know. Yeah. I really love the way how they interact with each other and around the environment, you know. What was something that you learned through the experience? I, I hear very clearly that it was an experience for you to overcome your own personal fears, um, but you also were there to learn more about uh, the ecosystem that exists. What was the most interesting thing that you learned? I learned that a dolphin uses two sides of two brain, like, like it used half a sleep, and then half like when it want to breathe, it could go up that water and breathe like. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. cool. Cool, yeah, <laughs> indeed. Well, I learned about the um, lionfish. Mm -hmm. That even though, like, after they like once they die, they still could like give a venomous oh. sting. You know? Yeah. So as long as they're dead, they still you still could get uh, uh, yeah. venom. And venom it's in also a trip to a reef, though. Yeah. Wow. So did what you, would did you learn to clean it? Mm -hmm. Did you learn to clean it? The lionfish? Well, I never went too close to it because, like... Because <laughs> you know about the venom. Yeah. <laughs> but you eat it. You guys eat some, right? No, no we didn't. Oh, Why it's not? delicious. You should try yes, it. Yes, that thing is we delicious. Honestly, we asked, but I we don't only, know what We only make it so that we could have made learn about the parts and... Okay, okay. No, why would you, in, why would you guys uh, uh, encourage me to be a part of a, an environmental club? Well, for me, I would encourage you, like, if you never gone at a reef, if you... If you um, never see a shark or something like that and you want to experience it, I advise you. If you go, that great experience. It may go, it may awesome. <laughs> you will love I, it. Yeah. You will love it. Yeah. And you learn a lot about, about their habitat and yep. things. Well, these are raving reviews. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, it sounds it sounds pretty good to hear the feedback like that from the students who are actually out there um, taking in the experience. Yeah. Um, we've been working with this school for uh, academic year long, academic school year long period, um, and we've developed this program that the marine the marine course wasn't their only experience or our only um, introduction to environmentalism to them or with yeah. them. Um, we have some workshops that we're doing this month with them. They couldn't participate in World Oceans Day tomorrow because they're in their exams this week. Oh, wow. yes. So um, they'll miss that, that opportunity on campus on that day. But we're commemorating it on Saturday with a workshop um, based on solid waste management that these students in their environmental club said, we have a problem with littering and pollution on our school campus. Mm -hmm. And we as a club want to do something about it. So they, in their club meeting, wrote a letter to um, MCAP, the Marine Conservation and Climate Change Adaptation Pro Project, um, and they sponsored some garbage containers and, and oh, some nice. materials for them to paint up and stuff yeah. and put some garbage containers on their school campus. And how is your education campaign going at school in encouraging your fellow students to not throw the garbage on the ground? Well, um, so far since we paint the drums and we um, like right encouraging coats. Um, coats and so pan the drums like it so far good yeah um you know so much dirt as before but yeah, yeah. it's getting there excellent and when you look at uh, I'd love that you looked in your own environment first before you moved out into mm -hmm. wanting to clean the whole neighborhood what do you find to be some of the reasons when you talk to other students uh, that perhaps they're not as conscious of the environment as you are. Um, uh, really question, Why don't they care about the environment as much as you do? Because like then they they don't like they don't know what what the garbage and the the 
littering do to them as like because they educate us about it but mm -hmm. they like the students not educated about it as yet. Are so they, you're trying to educate yeah. them. Yeah. What do you say to them though when they're throwing garbage around? What do you say to your, your parents? Um like just like one one piece of garbage that you throw on the ground could could harm somebody else that that like like the garbage could make you sick and like real sick. Mm -hmm. So that like if you if like to not be sick, just put the garbage in a bin so that you could dispose the proper way than and put it on the ground and so it's not just about looking clean it's about the yeah. safety and the yeah. health yes yeah what's something else that you you've identified at your school that you'd want to start to do next you're um, a third form student so you have one more year <laughs> yeah well um on on the course they put us in groups um you're supposed to come up with, a, with um something that you want to implement in a school or something our group um want to make a greenhouse because mm -hmm. Um, and then um, write a letter to the school to stop allow the fried chicken and the the fatty food that so that we can have a uh, healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle. Yeah. So you're gonna grow your own vegetables over the summer. Yes. Great what? job! I call up with Liz. And what about your group? Are you a part of her group? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. What are some of the other groups attempting to do? I'm not sure. Well, some of the other groups, like one person I know that they want to um, do the park painting. Okay. And go to parks and paint, you know, go in the environment and clean up, like, around the school yeah. or in you know, their own community, you know. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is, of course, very important. And uh, for Corey, uh, are you working only with uh, students from Gwen Desiraga? Um, no, sir. We're currently working with four high schools across Belize. Mm -hmm. Gwen Desiraga is only one of them that was funded by MCAP, the Marine Conservation and Climate Adaptation Project, mm -hmm. which is funded by the World Bank. So we've been um, working with MCAP for three years now, and for those three years, we work with two schools per year in a uh, academic school year long period. And then outside of um, that immediate contract with MCAP, we as EPI work with some other local high schools across Belize too. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd imagine that taking a group of young people out to Turnip, Turnip is like the far furthest point that you wow. can go. You are like on the tip of, of, of Belize. What is actually Belize? Um, <laughs> it has to be such an eye-opening experience for a lot of people from Belize City have not been out to some of the islands so far, no. especially islands like Turnef. Tell me about the experience from your end. Because as an environmentalist, you go out to the reef, you see all these things. It's, it's a part of your natural work environment. Right. So what's it like when you see the young people having that first time interaction? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. Um, like hearing feedback like this, because I sit, I sit in the office and I actually compose or create this experience that these students or these people will have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a vision for them to one, be out there and have a safe and fun learning environment. That's, there's a lot that goes into it. So I'm, I come across a lot of people that say, yeah, it's the first time you've gone to the Keys or to the rainforest, or I really didn't know about this before, or you hear about it, but you don't make that kind of connection that it could come back to me, yeah. my community, my country, my economy. Um, so for, for us hearing what we create and compose and seeing it actually being like um, taken in by people and wanting to make a change, yeah. it's inspiring to us and it makes us want to do it even more so. Of course. Yeah. What are some of the, most, uh, the common what questions asked? A shark egg. Uh. It's a what? Shark egg. A, a shark egg? Wait, wait, See, wait, I've wait, never wait. seen that. Looks like an alien creature. Yeah. <laughs> That's a shark mm -hmm. egg? I think that might be the local name for it. We have it on our Facebook page right now, uh -huh. um, and we're opening it up to the community for a forum for them to be able to, to try to identify what it is. What it is. So I encourage you guys to go on our Facebook page, give us a like. Uh -huh. and <laughs> What's the page? What's the page? The oh, we bought into that the one The Facebook so page that was not planned. <laughs> EPI Belize. Um, and we also have an Instagram page too, so you could go on that and give us a like. Yeah. What are the common, uh, commonly asked questions by folks who have never been out and you're about to set foot out there? Um, uh, <laughs> there are a lot of fears is probably um, their swimming abilities or, or like Alonza, Alonza said, uh, coming in contact with wildlife. Um, so they were telling me that how they were snorkeling, <laughs> checking out the reef and all of a sudden this nurse shark came swimming underneath them um, <laughs> and at first they wanted to break away but... Um, you thought it was going to be like Jaws? <laughs> yes. To run to the beach? <laughs> Those movies. I knew it was a nurse shark but I was still afraid because yeah. I, 
them in my first time, so yeah. they, they see it, so I mean, like, real. Yeah. People have a lot of misconceptions about it. For example, like, um, the lionfish that Alonza was talking about, people think it's venomous if you touch it and that we can't eat it and stuff, but what we're trying to get out there is that this could be a real resource for us right now and we're rich in it, the, the lionfish are taking over our reef yeah. and we could use it as a marketable technique to, to help our economy and, and help our reef at the same time. Of course. Yeah. And I, I want to hear about the rainforest experience too, though. Yeah. The rainforest yeah. experience. Um, they haven't gotten a chance to go on that one oh. yet. That will be coming up in, in at the end of this month, actually. So they'll go and check that out. Okay. Um, <laughs> but our our rainforest <laughs> curriculum. Are they camping? Um, no, this one they won't be. They won't be camping over like there. Day trip, no. yeah. But we have um, a four-day uh, course that goes to Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary mm -hmm. too. Um, outside of cell phone and internet range and mm -hmm. immediate society just like turn a fato. Um, <laughs> they get to go hiking into the rainforest, check out the, the a part of the watershed and our, our river system, yeah. learn about uh, the different soil textures, agriculture, agriculture, agroforestry. Um, mm -hmm. Stuff that's important for them to know about that they could utilize in their everyday lives, man. So you have graduated from this program, you've also uh, you're a part of the environmental club and you're science students. Does this mean that you see a future for yourself working within the environmental sector? Yes. Before I got from the trip, I wanted to be a gynecology, but after coming from the trip, uh -huh. I think I changed my mind. Are you oh. biologist? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wanted, to, I wanted to be a pilot. Like, now I know this stuff and, you know, my experience is wide about nature. Yeah. I now feel like I should be a marine biologist. Wow. Yes. They have a call to duty now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you know, and, and that's but one of the things. But you can still be an environmental activist and a pilot or but and a guy. But it's great that you understand mm -hmm. the resources uh, that we have. And that's one of the most important things, you know. Uh, it, getting them in the first-hand uh, aspect of things would eventually change their minds. Correct. But the importance of it, of course, is for them to carry on out the message. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we continue to ask, what do you say to your friends after coming back from um, from the, the atoll? Well, I I will advise them to join the club um, because they will learn a lot of stuff they I think they don't know. Yeah. So I would advise them to join the club. You? you? Well, you know, me, like my friends, they they were like, "What happened?" You know, and I like, man, the experience was great. That's something we don't want to do. You forget, in, when, once you get in eight, you know. And many questions that like, my mom personally had, you know, mm -hmm. I could have answered yeah. because of stuff that I learned, you know. Yeah. What was the most surprising part of the experience? Like, I always hear when people go out beyond the reef, they're like, the water's really, really mm -hmm. blue. <laughs> yes. um, or the beach is that white sand beach that, that we can't imagine. What was something that was really just either beautiful or surprising to you? Well, the drop-off was surprising, but to me, the the most surprising part, the moment we can swim by the mangroves, like, uh -huh. you you just see the trees at top and then the lone stem go down Oops. in the water. Yes. And we go, and then we made a swim over a stingray, and I'm like, hmm, and I'm gonna go back to the boat, because I'm afraid. <laughs> and then they have for me back, and then I'm gone. But it's good. And then I learned that, you know, if you know, if, I, if like, if you know, if you know, mess with it, you know, I mess no, with it. So it. just stay far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it was when I was like, wrong, around the reef. You know, there's just these big reefs and stuff and beautiful fishes just, yeah. Yeah. And know. the colors. Yes. As beautiful as they look on TV, the colors in person are just, you can't beautiful. describe them, right? You did snorkeling, yes. yeah? Were you scared about snorkeling? Um, the first time, first. <laughs> the first time, what else than that? Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. <laughs> we need to get you guys out there with an underwater camera okay. to follow us snorkeling okay. one of these times. Yeah, see the parrot fish, the oh, fishes are beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Right away, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ooh, what else would gosh. you like to say to other young people about why it's important to get involved and, and be a part of the, uh, the promotion of securing our own environment? Um, well, the environment has a lot to do with us as well. So like, if you get educated about it, you'll be cautious of what to do and, and how to do it. So like, like, I would advise them for like, 
learn more about it. Like, like you see a lot of things on TV, but sometimes you're not sure what to believe. So like, if you if you um, learn it, like if you go to a course and learn it, like like they teach you about it, you more understand than than mm -hmm. on the TV. So so that you will be more uh, um, more understanding and yeah. Okay. Anything from you? Well. I would like to say, like, just get involved, you know, mm -hmm. because our environment contributes to us in many ways, you know, and if we, if we litter and have the environment dirty and stuff, then we can't get what we need from the environment, you know. Yeah. yeah. You're looking forward to the rainforest trip? Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> Wildlife? USA Jaguars? He says spiders um, would be there. Uh, spiders? And frog, and yes. frog and you know, you're afraid of a frog? I'm afraid, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but enjoy it. It'll be just like when you saw the stingray and shark. It'll be all yes. a new experience. And uh, I'm sure a part of Corey's job is to ensure that you're safe too. So yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> will happen. Corey, uh, you know, this is such a great experience for this one school. What's the plan in terms of being able to partner with other schools as time goes by? Um, yeah, we're in the pipelines. We're planning to reach as, as much schools as we can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with any organization or the reality of uh, today's <laughs> day and time is funding. Mm -hmm. um, but we're working hard to try to secure funds so that we could approach other schools and give other students these same kinds of experience like, like Alonza and Risa had. <clears throat> and I mean, I'd like to encourage them to continue being active through word and through action, yeah. talking to your friends and continuing to do stuff on campus or in your house or in your community like this. Mm -hmm. um, and continuing to encourage everybody to take a part in like just uh, taking care of the environment to taking off light switches at home and not using them. Um, you know, and just probably recycling when you can and stuff like that. Of course. All right. All right. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing your experience. Uh, and we wish you the best of luck with your upcoming rainforest trip as well. Enjoy that one. Um, just, just before, um, mm -hmm. I would like to say, you know, thank you to um, EPA and NCAP. I also okay. want to um, thank Mr. Palnerales for, you know, writing this letter so that we could get on this trip. Yeah. And our acting principal, I want to thank Gwen in a whole, you know, yeah. for, you know, for supporting you all. Yes, mm -hmm. and also I want to thank my class too. Yeah. Class three one science, you know. All right. You get in trouble if you don't give the big up, you yeah. know. Big up too. Yeah. Um, thanks. Like, like, um, I want to thank because I never expect. I mean, I ever do something like so awesome. Yeah. Like, thanks so much for for um. I always get in you know, the um, club and my class. I can't. I can't. I have to say about mm -hmm. my class because, yeah. But thanks to make um, the trip, Mr. Awesome. Like, and it also bring our class closer together as well. And yeah, my good and the principal, and Mr. Norales as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, are you uh, three what? Three A one. Okay, same class. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> 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 We're gonna go ahead and now take a break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about the Olympic Day runs. So stay tuned.